Hi John, my name is Art Tellup, and today I'm going to present the prototype version of Blocks of Life. Uh, first we're going to start off with what was presented at BGG Spring Convention uh, just last weekend. And then we're going to go over some of the updates and some of the feedback that we got from the convention uh, that we're going to integrate into the game. So, to start, uh, the game is played on this board here. Uh, there are some plans to change this based on the number of players. Um, but for right now, this is this is what we got to present. Uh, there are land plates that move around. There are volcanic chains. There are glaciers. Uh, these are um, energy pools, which are basically bonus tiles uh, for wherever they're at. And then these are the population tokens for each player. Uh, each player has their own color. So this is for the red player, and this is for the yellow player, and they have their own associated DNA uh, sequence and uh, genetics cards. So this is how the cards and DNA sequence work. So if you look at your cards down here, you can see that you have a green box which indica indicates what you're going to collect uh, during the collection phase of your turn. So as you go down the line, you can see that you have CC here and CC here so that you will collect a purple for each CC that you have in your sequence, you'll collect two purples during your collection phase for that particular card. You also collect four CCT, CCT, right here, you'll get another purple. And for CTG, CTG, you'll get a blue. And so, uh, oh, sorry, and TGGG, TGGG will give you a yellow. Now, one thing that you'll notice right away from the cards is that you have some overlap in some of your collection sequences. So you'll notice that unicellular is closely tied to aquatic. Just like in nature, genes aren't separate from each other. One strand of DNA does not dictate uh, a certain thing. So there's not a strand of DNA that makes red hair. It interacts with uh, other genetics that are in an organism to make a whole uh, whole thing, and then it gradually evolves from there. So the other neat thing about this game is that your DNA and your genetics are going to generally build over time, rather than uh, kind of just morph in and out like a Pokemon trading card game or something like that. They're actually gonna grow in an engine builder style. Uh, so although you make modifications, for example, over here you'll notice that we didn't collect from the uh, heterotroph card because GA was not active. Well, if I wanted to activate GA in here, the piece that uh, would be easiest to change first would be this guy right here. And all I would have to do is spend a purple in order to do that uh, during the off turn. And that action is indicated on the DNA card over here. So you can see one uh, allows you to rotate a nuke base. So I would be able to spend a purple during my off turn to rotate that guy to a GAG so that next time I collect I'd be able to activate that and collect an orange from the GA in my sequence. Now I might also uh, be interested in trying to add more genes onto the DNA or more nuke bases excuse me onto the DNA sequence so that I could collect maybe doubles from that so maybe I'd spend a purple purple yellow in order to get another A into my sequence like so so that I have a GA and another GA enabling me to collect two oranges during my turn. Now different colors of energy are going to allow you to do different things throughout the game, but your primary objective is to collect points. And the way you get points is with population tokens. That's it. The player that has the most population tokens either collected or on the board by the end of the game wins. So one of the rules in the prototype version that, it, that is going to change slightly is that every time that you buy or sell a card, a genetics card, uh, you have to reduce your populations down to two contiguous populations on the board, which induces risk. So essentially, just like in nature, uh, whenever you introduce a new mutation or new idea into this into this gene pool, uh, it essentially has to prove itself. It's it's at a higher risk, and so it has to outdo the rest of the competition or the status quo that's already there. Hence the reduction on the board. Um, basically, if you're going to try to upgrade your engine, uh, there's risk associated with the upgrade. Do I stay with what I got and make it 
work really well and just kind of keep rolling with it or do I want to take a little chance and make it really good hopefully in the long run all right so one of the things that I mentioned is buying and selling cards so you can buy and sell cards uh, in this current version at any point in time so you'll notice here that hyperthermophile generates a yellow for you but we've also changed in our sequence uh, in here to have an A as opposed to a G in the middle of the DNA. So we no longer will be able to collect from hyperthermophile on the next turn if we're trying to collect from heterotroph. This can be a little bit of a problem. So instead of just letting this gene card lay fallow, uh, we can go ahead and sell that for the cell value on the card, which if you can see here, the cell value for hyperthermophile is 2Y. So I can sell this card off collect my 2y instead, and on the board, I'm going to reduce down to two connected population tokens, or contiguous, however you want to want to phrase that. So again, in inducing risk, and the nice thing about this is that this population token counts towards your point total. So it doesn't just go away, it's not just dead. It actually is a counted point, it's just now it's easier for you to get run over by a land plate, or consumed by glaciers or waste on the board, which brings me to my next point. So waste is another uh, ecological, or I'm sorry, it's another aspect of the game that is ecological in nature. So what we have here is, a better example would be autotroph. So I'll just bring this card up for you. So you notice that when I combine a blue and a red uh, for the synthesize action on the autotroph card, it gets me five yellows. Yellows are basically the um, the main currency for reproduction. So if you look here on the on the binary fission card, you'll see that blue plus two yellows lets you make a new population. You can see pretty easily from that that yellows are going to be an important player in proliferating your species or making more of your species on the board. So this autotroph card is pretty powerful. It allows you to take a one single blue and one single red to make five yellows from which other players can steal, and you can also build your own populations. But it also has below that recipe waste. And what waste is, is it's taking resources from the bank and placing them in the board next to one of your population tokens or in a tile that they occupy. In this case, if Red had uh, spent a red and a blue in order to produce five yellows, they would then, after they've gained their five yellows, place three orange wastes on the board and so, taking up space. This creates a real estate problem, and as the game progresses, it can get pretty tight in squares. So you might say, okay, that's great, but, but what happens to the rest of the real estate once it all gets taken up by waste? Well, fortunately, there are other cards that allow you to recycle waste. So just like in an ecological system, there's always give and take. So one interesting card um, that I'll just pull right here is a card called Colony. And what Colony allows you to do is it allows you to recycle uh, two of the same uh, energy cube, same color energy cube, from the board, and then you take one of those and keep it in your hand. So the way that would work is, uh, during the collection phase of my term, just for example, I would take two of these oranges, if I wanted an orange, and I would throw one back in the bank, and I would keep one for myself. So that's how recycling would work. So recycling and waste kind of go hand in hand as a uh, method for managing real estate on the board. Waste can also be a powerful tool for getting rid of people in or around areas that you don't really want them to be. Maybe you're around one of these nice little energy pools and you don't want anyone else intruding on your territory. Well, if uh, the autotroph decides to continually waste into a tile uh, to the point where it becomes a little bit too full, then there's a decision to be made. So as the tile fills up, you can see that it literally runs out of space. Right? So if I do, do a lot of actions with waste, and as I get more population tokens or more players, this becomes an issue. But I can actually waste out another player and remove their population without them collecting any points from that, from that space. So in that way, the autotrophs can defend themselves from uh, the heterotrophs to a certain extent by producing a lot of waste and uh, pushing them off the board, uh, literally. 
So those are some of the unique aspects of the game. The, the most unique one being this uh, DNA sequence, as I mentioned before, in a, in a tray format in which you can rotate, uh, flip, and actually I'll do it on this one up here so you can see better. You can rotate, you can flip it over, and you can add new ones or insert somewhere along that sequence, pushing the other ones along or remove from the sequence and push them back. Um, there's some other interesting scientific aspects that are a little bit subtle. And this will be where I end this part of the video because I don't want it to ramble on too long. And if you have any other questions, we can address those uh, at a later time and do a little bit more for this video. But for now, this will suffice. Uh, and I'll just go into this really quick. So um, I'm going to introduce two cards to you. Um, so the uh, Eukarya card. So you'll notice that on the Eukarya card, it has a requirement down at the bottom, noted by the pink label down here, a requirement of ACC. Now these requirements are going to change in the update a little bit, and they're going to be a little bit more organic. But you'll also notice that mitochondria has a similar requirement, but more importantly, it actually collects from something that has ACCT already in its sequence. So if I have ACC, as required by Eukarya, then I'm going to be apt to be looking for mitochondria because I already have this ACC, it's redundant in my sequence and therefore it's gonna be a really nice thing for me to have. So I've made a subconscious association between these two things because I wanna get another blue uh, energy cube collected during my turn and now I've associated mitochondria with eukarya which is, as you know, uh, eukarya has mitochondria in their cells. So it makes these uh, scientific observations in a, in a subtle way that doesn't force players to memorize science facts, but just play the science. Um, I think it's a little bit easier that way than trying to put a square peg in a round hole and uh, make a nice game, let the science overlay over top of it. Um, oh, I forgot one other thing. Uh, this is why it's a rough video. Um, so you do your turn, you take your, uh, you do your collection, you take any actions that you wanna take, when your turn is over, you're going to draw a card from the Natural Selector deck. Right now, and this is, again, something that will change in the update that we'll discuss later. <clears throat> right now, most of the cards in this deck are genetic cards. Some of them, however, are what we call event cards. And event cards are what allow you to do things like move glaciers around, uh, push uh, land plates around, and explode volcanoes, or remove them, add them, that sort of thing. So. In this particular example, this one has moved two different land plates, which are uh, independent of each other, and then move a pool one space. So that is the sales pitch in, in the long format for someone who would be very patient at the booth during the uh, BGG Con. Um, and oh, uh, one last thing is that uh, all of these pieces and all the cards were designed in house. So I, I did all the, if you want to call it graphic art, on the on the cards, and uh, I also uh, designed, CAD designed all of the different pieces and tokens that you see here, and I 3D printed them myself. So even if this project doesn't work out, and you kind of like what you see, uh, I'm not looking for business or anything like that necessarily, but um, if you need help with something for CAD design or software, and this looks really cool to you, and you, you like what I've done, I'd be more than happy to help out with any uh, scientific endeavors that you might have. So. Um, either in the classroom or for board gaming or what have you. So anyways, thank you very much and we'll get to the second half of the video now. Thanks a lot. Hi again, John. Uh, this is the second half of the video. It's going to be a little bit more rambling. I apologize for that. Uh, this is just a rough version of some of the updates and some of the feedback uh, considerations that we had from the convention from our playtesters and from Kevin at AD Games. So I'm just going to walk you through a little bit. So to start, Here's one of the problems we had at the playtest. Six players have to go through this entire stack. That's a problem. That takes way too long. Um, two players wasn't too bad. So two players was probably about like this. And two players were very doable. And we actually had to cut it down even further because it, the players just got kind of impatient. Um, one of the other things you probably had a concern about during the first half of the video was Ooh, there's a lot going on and there's all these cards for purchase and there's new ones cropping up every time I draw a new card and then I have to consider this. So as I mentioned in my email, we've eliminated a good portion of that. There's a few ways that we've done it. So the first thing that we've done 
is we've reduced significantly overall the number of cards and just either combined them into multi-cards or uh, done something else with them. Um, the second thing is that you'll no longer be drawing uh, genetics cards from here. Uh, they'll either, for the most part, they're, they're not going to be in here. They'll be out ready for purchase based on the scenario, so there'll only be a handful rather than all of the different options all up front. Um, and then additionally, the scenarios will be designed to teach the players how to play as they go from block to block. So even though the game gets more complex and more difficult, uh, you'll be a seasoned novice by the time you see something like uh, I demonstrated to you um, on, the, on the table there. So, um, some of the other problems that we ran into. Uh, as you might have guessed, it's a little bit difficult to actually remember to reduce your population tokens every time that you buy or sell a card, because you're so focused in on your DNA sequence, I'm gonna spend some purples, do this, and spend some more purples, do this, uh, oh, oh, uh, I have to reduce. You know, this became a problem for a lot of the playtesters, and they you know, like scratching their heads, oh, I forgot to reduce three turns ago. We fixed all that. So what we decided to do was we have a new rule. So purples, as a resource now, are going to act as our point mechanism. So before I mentioned that population tokens are points. Well, now, whenever they're collected, they get converted into a purple. And instead of collecting a bunch of purples throughout the game, you're just going to get a little smidgen uh, thrown at you, uh, just one each round, just to keep things kind of moving. And then your uh, populations are going to act as your mechanism for change. So you can choose to use your points and collect and reduce them down uh, and use them to either build a better engine or just use them and hoard them uh, until the end of the game. So you could stagnate as a species as a viable alternative or a viable strategy as opposed to having to build your engine just like everyone else around you. And this actually happens in nature. We have organisms that are pretty much the same way they've been since uh, the Precambrian. So uh, there's no reason for players to not be able to do that throughout the game. So we figured we'd let them do that and make it a little bit more simple in the process. So you can see here that purples are basically interchangeable with mutations, and you generate purples from points, i.e. populations or collection of populations from the board. Now, in order to do this, we had to introduce a new mechanism. So the new mechanism was a new turn uh, phase, or new turn phases. So first thing you're gonna do when you come to your turn is you're gonna decide how many populations you wanna reduce from the board. That way you get to decide how many purples, or how much risk, you want to induce in order to take on more mutations. The more purples you collect, the more risk you induce, and the more mutations you're allowed to do. So there's a direct correlation. Then we launch into exactly what we had before. So it's pretty straightforward. You collect your stuff, you take your on-turn actions, you draw your card, um, and then events only, m mostly events. And then you do your off-turn actions during your off-turn. So if there's things that are keeping the game from going quickly like you have in some other games, um, I have a friend that plays Small World and he takes forever to take his turn, which is part of the reason why we decided to do something like this, because there are those players out there. Um, but you can do most of your actions while you're not even having your turn in front of you. So this makes the game go a lot quicker. And even with a small stack, it's still going to take a while to get through everything. Um, so that's some of the major changes we made with the plague. Um, I also introduced some other card types. You'll notice that all the cards that we had there were just a single card with a single name at the top, and that card does what that card is. And that's pretty, pretty much all it does. Well, with the two new card types, this is gonna make the game a little bit more, it's actually gonna make it a little bit easier to play. Um, and it looks a little bit worse, but I'll explain why it's better. So, we have upgrade cards, and we have rotation cards. So upgrade cards are just like they sound. You're gonna buy the level one, it's gonna sit under an existing card at the level one, and you're gonna pay a cost to upgrade it um, as much as you want to throughout the, throughout the game after you purchase it initially. So these are gonna allow us to stack up some things that just kinda work in a chain that you didn't need to buy, okay, I need to buy this card, I need to buy this card, I need to buy this one, and it's gonna just take up a lot of space on the board and, and really just kinda aggravate players because they have to read more. And now all I have to do is say, oh, this card's good. Oh, maybe I want to upgrade it because it's a linear mechanism. Then there's optional mechanisms. So, <laughs> and this is, this is my uh, and or logic key 
training and government here, but anyways, um, so you have a rotation mechanism here. You're gonna get to choose from different options. Sometimes you'll have two options. Sometimes you'll have three options. Uh, again, with the upgrades, you know, you could have one all the way up to four, I guess, earlier. Really, it's probably gonna be two or three for both of these cards. Um, but at any rate, uh, rotation cards you get to select before your collection phase uh, which option you want to have. So if, say, for some reason you change your genetics during your off turn and you're like, well, I think I can actually pull this off, I'm gonna rotate to some other version of this card so that I collect this color versus this color, or I have this recipe versus this recipe. Then, uh, you know, it's just there and available for you. You don't have to buy and sell a card and do all these things uh, to make that possible. Still playing around with the idea of um, requiring purples to be able to do this. Um, this may not require purple, this probably will. But we have to do a little bit of play testing first to see and test the waters. Okay, so an example of one of these cards, this one's pretty straightforward so I won't get into that, but a rotatable card. So if you look up here, um, I have basically the new cornerstone foundation of the, uh, the energy that's collected throughout the game. So I have a card. Uh, this side of the card, the, the front side is autotroph, and the back side is the corresponding uh, heterotroph version, if you will. Um, so for the autotroph side, I have three different options for their energy. So as you probably are familiar, autotrophs derive their carbon from uh, usually CO2 from the atmosphere. Uh, and heterotrophs have to get their carbon from another resource, from usually another organism or something like that. Uh, so the way these guys work is this is just kind of similar to the old autotroph and actually the light autotroph uh, You probably won't recognize the formula, but I do <laughs> is just GTG and it actually works the exact same way as it did before and the heterotroph that's organic Also works the same way that the heterotroph did from before, but now there's more options uh, Green is now going to be utilized properly instead of just being like a, a super blue, which is uh, it doesn't didn't work out very well. No one used greens during the course of any of the playtesting that occurred So we've decided to do uh, this with it instead and it allowed us to introduce the domain of archaea Which is a really important domain in biology. That's just not really being discovered And I think it would get people really excited about biology in general um, Because of all the weird stuff it can do and a lot of the science text that we can add to the errata so uh, in any case uh, You can see three different options here so option one would go here, it would be your organic uh, collection, so you would collect a green from CGC uh, for the autotroph side of the card, and you would get an associated um, autotrophic style recipe where you mix a green and a blue to make yellows, just like the card that I showed in the earlier part of the program. It's not a program, not a video. <laughs> Sorry it's gone on so long, John. I really apologize. Um, but at any rate, uh, we saw earlier that you could combine a blue and a red to make a bunch of yellows. Similarly, now you can do a green and a, and a blue to make yellows, and so on down the line. The upshot of this is that you get different colors of waste as well. So now there's cross interactions between different types of organisms using different types of energy. So just because you have a bunch of guys using green, it isn't going to be a good thing. People are going to have to diversify. So if everyone's uh, using inorganic or their lithotrophs, um, there's going to be a problem because they're not going to have the right resources on the board and the waste is just going to accumulate. So players are going to have to work together a little bit to make a good ecological system that actually works well together, even though they're competing. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say for this. I really appreciate your patience. And again, uh, if there's any insufficiencies in the video, if there's anything else you want to see, uh, I know it's very long, but wanted it here. So thank you very much and uh, have a good one.